I can take you now, Lieutenant. Thank you very much, Doctor. Couch, Lieutenant. New patients generally decide the first time whether they want to lie there or sit here. Which do you prefer? Excuse me, sir? To discuss your problem. You said you wanted to see me. Oh, that'll be about my report, Dr. Hammer. It's nothing personal. My report on the drowning. Accidental drownings, they want a whole life history. Falling down the stairs, you wouldn't believe the reports they want for falling down the stairs. I guess it's for statistics. So, uh... I think I'll take the chair. I see. Well, in that case, I've had a busy morning and rather a sleepless night thinking about Louise, so if you won't mind, I'm just going to stretch out here for a few minutes. Not at all, sir. Go right ahead. Oh. I'm going to miss her. I think I know exactly what you mean, sir. Well, thank you for being understanding, Lieutenant. Uh, doctor, you said that Mrs. Barsini first came here because of her husband. Uh, ex-husband. Was there anything else, sir? Well, I suppose with Louise gone, these things can be discussed. She complained of terrifying dreams. Nightmares. I... I'm afraid I forget the details. Well, try to remember, sir. You know, sometimes it helps if you... you just say the first thing that pops into your head. Well, I remember I was having difficulty interpreting the dreams. Uh, I always felt Louise was repressing something. Holding back? Hiding behind a memory. It always made the analysis more difficult. Dreams are tough enough to deal with. It's like a, a riddle inside a code, inside a cipher. It's, it's real detective work. Everything upside down and reversed. The nightmares, sir. Can you tell me more about the nightmares? Well, if you're interested, I suppose Louise could tell you herself. I encouraged her to, to keep a tape machine next to the bed so that she could describe the dreams as soon as possible on, on waking up. See if I can dig up one or two of the tapes for you. There were three different recurring nightmares. Oddly enough, each one began with a knock on the door in the middle of the night. That, that place, that bar where she lived with Barsini. Something terrible must have happened there. Whatever it was, she couldn't talk about. Did you say a bar, sir? Uh, yeah, but I... I don't remember the name of the place. Could that have been Vito's Bar? Oh, that's right. Vito's Bar. Doctor, you've done very well. A genuine Barsini. A masterpiece, Lieutenant. That's what a friend does. In the old days, when he was living here, he was unknown, a suffering artist. Uh, and that's when he was living with Louise. Now he comes back, and look what he does. I'm going to show you. <laughs> For me. Well, that certainly is a Barsini, sir. <laughs> see, you see that red? Huh? That's a special red. That red, that's a Barsini red. He mixes that himself. Himself? He grinds it up with some special ingredient. That's incredible. And he doesn't always use it. And never with nudes. Well, it's an idiosyncrasy. I read about that. A Barsini nude, no Barsini red. That's interesting. Idiosyncrasy. Yeah. He's going to do my portrait. Did I tell you he's going to paint me? In the nude? No. Oh, well, tell me. I thought for a moment. <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> Maybe he'll use the red. Is this still wet? It is wet. Three days wet. Hey, Max, look, your painting already brings in a customer. <laughs> what is there in the soul of man, Lieutenant, that brings him to test for wet paint? Accept my word, don't touch it. I think I already did, sir. My sleeve. Hey, my painting. Bring my bag, Vito. I'll repair it in my studio. I'm sorry, sir. Don't say another word. What are you doing here anyway? Are you investigating me, Lieutenant? No, sir, no, no, nothing like that. A drowning accident, no witnesses. We're supposed to check up and see what people were doing at the time, you and the painting and all. I find that rather insulting. To tell you the truth, sir, so do I, but it all has to go in a report. There's no question what you were doing when Mrs. Barsini passed away. A work like that, that didn't just happen. Exactly.
Oh, Mr. Barsini. Uh, Dr. Hammer, he was telling me about your wife's nightmares. Did you know that she was having nightmares? She never mentioned it. Well, it was a while back. Maybe she got over them. Uh, but Dr. Hammer, he thinks that something pretty frightening happened to her while you were both living here. And uh, he thinks that she was repressing it. Um... Oh. Well, that's you and the victim, isn't it, sir? Yes. Can you think of anything frightening? No, unless poverty can be regarded as frightening. Well, maybe, uh, maybe you're so buried in the tape, sir, you know, uh, I mean, these things that she wouldn't talk about. Hmm. Tapes? The dreams she put on tapes, the tape that Dr. Hammer's getting for me. For your report? Uh, yes, sir, if it concerns the victim's state of mind. Are you suggesting suicide? Can't rule anything out, sir. Just dig into whatever you have, even if it's just dreams. I see. I think it's time we got to work. I beg your pardon, sir? On your portrait. Shall we see our first sitting tomorrow? Oh, well, you can count on me for that, sir. <laughs> the bag. <laughs> there you are. Come on. Now you're complete, huh? He even looks like an artist. I just wish I could paint you, sir. <laughs> Indeed. The nightmares, Lieutenant. I'd be interested to hear about my wife's dreams. Former wife, sir. Of course. Former wife. Would you mind if I looked around up there just to see where it all began? Sure. Hey, but maybe I should charge money for this. Harry Chudnow would make a lot of money. Who is Harry Chudnow? <laughs> Max's first art dealer. And the monocle. The, oh, I would have to charge you a lot of money, old boy. <laughs> for the police, everything is on the house. Be my guest. Thank you very much. OK. Just one more thing.